household Maori is Chief Cook. At present, he is placing stones on the embers of a fire built in a shallow hole in the ground to demonstrate the ancient Maori method of cooking in a Maori oven or hanga. Nearby are the women, who by ritual must never touch the fire. They are plaiting small baskets in which the food will be served. The ancient Maoris ate mostly seafood and root vegetables, and their tastes haven't changed very much today. Potatoes are scraped with a seashell, and another New Zealand housewife tries it out to see if it's as good as a potato peeler. Maybe it's a little better. The stones are hot, and the women are summoned to bring the food over to be cooked. placed on the hot stones. Leaves protect it from the earth which seals this early form of pressure cooker. A sprinkling of water will provide the necessary steam. After 20 minutes, the food is uncovered. served in the little plaited baskets, and the tourists, for whose benefit the demonstration has been given, can try the food cooked in the simple Maori oven. It looks as though they think it's pretty good. Why not try it at your next barbecue party? Two of New Zealand's rare white herons have come to Kaiapoi on the Waimakariri River. All through the winter, children have gone down to the herons' feeding ground, and people who work by the river have come to learn of their habits. Kaiapoi boys have found the reason for such poor nettings of eels and small fish. delicate steps, the heron moves about, barely disturbing the water, alert, watching, listening. To the old-time Maori, the white heron was called the kotaku, a bird so rare that it was seen but once in a lifetime. Today, under strict protection, the kotaku is slowly increasing. This forest scene is almost in the heart of Wellington. It's full of light and shade, patterns of leaf and root forms, designs that belong to New Zealand. And here, one of New Zealand's artists is recording these patterns, Mervyn Taylor, whose wood engravings are steadily making a name for him far outside his own country. Patterns of trees in the bush, of grass and clover shapes, anything that can be moulded into a composition of form and design the shapes and rhythm and story of New Zealand. These are his interests, Maori life today and yesterday, and so that he may go on with his study of Maori life and legend and continue to produce work of this high quality, the Association of New Zealand Art Societies has just awarded him a scholarship for two years.
Mervyn Taylor's studio is in his home in Wellington, clinging to the Karori hillside. It's a bright, comfortable studio with plenty of light. He's his own boss, working in his own time. But it wasn't always like that. During the war, it all started. As a staff illustrator on the army educational magazine, Corredo, Taylor began to turn to good account the sure fine touch he'd learnt as a jewellery engraver and the sure sense of design he'd needed as a commercial artist. These combined with his own natural gifts resulted in some very fine work. The war over, he became illustrations editor on the school journal, where there were new techniques to be learnt. At the same time, book plates, decorated letters and folio prints. And pretty soon, he was able to start work on his own. T is for Terence Taylor, who's decided that an artist's life is definitely not for him. However, even a potential engineer isn't above taking an interest in a pen and ink drawing his father's just finished. It's the design for a new wood engraving for a New Zealand book. Choosing the block. Satin smooth hardwood. The best come from Southeast Asia, but our own Southland beach is a good substitute. A coating of ink covers the sheen, and onto this, a tracing of the original drawing is made. And now, the first cuts. Lines of hairbreadth fineness, and every one of them final. They can't be altered. Some hours of meticulous work later, a wider gouge comes into action on the broader expenses. Each day of work on the block has seen the gradual change, until at last the final cuts are made. The block looks like the finished result with a pattern of white on black. But first for printing, a thin film of ink must be transferred by roller to the block. Fine rice paper gives the best print, an ordinary spoon handle brings up the design. The finished forest print, and the forest is our bushland. Another book illustration takes its place among Mervyn Taylor's mounting collection. In the bookshops, his craft is found in various forms. Besides his own two volumes of collected prints, there are his illustrations for other books. Large scale or miniature, book illustration or folio print, in all of them, was the same high quality. The quality that's come to be associated with this outstanding New Zealand artist.